Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Alex King, and Tom Wells here on this Friday. It is November the 2nd, 2018, 8 a.m. New York time. That's 5 p.m. Los Angeles time. And uh, under the current setup of, of daylight, trans- daylight Savings Time transitioning to Standard Time, that means it's 12 noon London time. And starting next week, I'll have to transition that again because we're having our Daylight Savings Time this weekend. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I do wish the countries would kind of get together and say, oh, we're all going to shift over at the same time. That would make my life so much easier. It but, would oh, well. make sense. It would, yeah. yeah. But, oh, well, that's okay. So, Alex, I mean, <laughs> how you? We, we talked three days ago. How you doing, though? Your, your week is going good, I imagine. Well, you're lazy, so you got to be doing good, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see the full shirt. There's a whole explanation. Oh, there is. Lazy. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is the explanation for lazy? What, what, what's it all about? I forget. It's, um, what does it say? Not as Not eager, eager. Re- something. Uh, ready to something. Ready to take a nap, probably <laughs> napping right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's cool. So good. Well, then, I then you, you're, upside down for a second. you're feeling comfortable. That's good. So, hey, Tom, how are yes. you doing? We haven't talked in a week, but how's it going? Oh, lots of changes this week. Um, you know, just an emotional roller coaster. It's really fun, and I'm um, just discovering a lot of stuff about myself. Constantly. Self-discovery, big thing. Yeah, no doubt yeah, about it. Yeah, self-discovery, a lot of good interaction with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Well, it's been an interesting week for uh, the, the podcast, too, because uh, we're now – um, first of all, this is a new thing for us because we've been uh, live streaming to uh, another Law of Attraction group. Today we're live streaming to the Law of Attraction Beginners group. This is the first time we've live streamed to that group. And uh, this is kind of a test because uh, the uh, one of the two admins of the group, uh, uh, Ross and I were having a conversation on Wednesday, I think it was. And he was suggesting we need to do a lot of promotion to kind of get it out there that we're going to, going to be right. doing this on a regular basis. But I figured I'd give it a shot just to put it out there on the group today just to see, will anyone tune in? Is there enough traffic in the group to have somebody just happen by and just see, oh, hey, there's something going on. I'll check out what's going on. So yeah, it's cool. a little bit of an experiment to compare it to the other group we've been uh, podcasting to lately. And uh, so that's going to be fun. How um, are you doing this week? Well, How am I doing? Um, I've been riding my own roller coaster. Uh, it's more of a roller sweet. coaster of survival <laughs> in terms nice. of <laughs> Louise, Louise's gardening service business is uh, winding down. Um, I think our last, our cruise last day, I believe, is Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember which. And when you're when you're going through the wind down process, it's it, it, it's like you're on a steam engine. You know, or, or, or a freight train or something. And you're, you're riding along on the train, you're riding along on the train, you're riding along on the train, and then all of a sudden you run out of track. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> it's like, oh my so God, hit the brakes! <laughs> wow. So, so it's a little run bit crazy. Track, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's that's a little bit a little crazy. Bit. Yeah, that's quite a description. E- even though you know <laughs> that the, uh, the end of the season is coming, but nevertheless, you, you have to go full bore while you're going, you know, and then all of a sudden you, you right. slam the brakes on, which is, it's, uh-huh. it's a little disconcerting. But uh, that combined with the fact that we've been experimenting with this new platform for us doing our get together for doing the podcast, we're now using the Blue Jeans platform, uh, having moved away from the Zoom platform. And it's working out pretty well. The one thing that I really like about the Blue Jeans platform that the other one doesn't do very well is um, when we start getting people who want to talk to us, who want to join us on the, the podcast, and are listening in the audience, and we want to just kind of pluck them in, it's going to be a lot easier to do it with this new platform. Um, just because with Blue Jeans, everybody who connects to that platform counts as a participant, whereas with the Zoom platform, unless you're given a special email that says, okay, I want you to be a participant, you only count as a listener, and listeners can't be included in the discussion, which seems a little strange to me. But nevertheless, that's why I was looking yeah. for something else. And found Blue yeah. Jeans, and Blue Jeans is looking good so far. That plus uh, Blue Jeans seems to be a little bit more respectful about people's phone numbers. Um, as long as uh, they, they they initiate a call starting with the Blue Jeans app, then their phone numbers get masked, which is a good thing. So mm-hmm. I, I still am having trouble understanding that one. There are so many platforms out there for people to conference call where their phone numbers are exposed to everybody who's on the call. And I don't understand why these various providers do that, but... That's what they do. Yeah, that's so. not safe. No, it's not. Yeah, that's, I, don't, I don't get yeah, that. Yeah. I don't understand not that at all. But 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's not for me to figure out. I'm not the person who wrote the software. I simply find the best <laughs> software I can find and go with it, right? <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so anyway, Tom, you came up, as usual, with another uh, in-depth topic, overriding difficult feelings to get what we want. Is it possible... And I, I think I know what the answer is going to be, but we'll have to, to find out during the conversation. Maybe it's not possible. Who knows? <laughs> but I suspect well, it see, probably I, is. I think that's a question for each of us to answer. It's not something that there's an absolutist answer, except mine, of course, will be the truth. But you guys <laughs> answer whatever you want, you know. I love it. <laughs> so our truth guru, Tom Wells. Truth. It'll be my truth. <laughs> oh, okay. As I say with my friend, uh, you know, who's always telling me what the truth is, I say, in your hologram, it's the truth, not in my hologram. <laughs> you, know, you know, the way that I'm projecting reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're all projecting our own version of reality. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. And before we get deeply into it, I want to, first of all, welcome anyone who's listening in, in the Law of Attraction Beginners group. Uh, welcome to our live podcast here, or, or maybe you're catching the replay afterward, but uh, you know, feel free to uh, leave comments if you'd like to, and we'll respond to the comments either during the show or after the show, depending on when you leave them, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, interact with, you know, whatever, if you have a question, we'll, we'll try to answer the question, if, if you have a thought, we'll, we'll share the thought either on the current podcast, if that's when we get it, or later on, you know, but feel free to interact, and also in the description uh, of this podcast, you'll find links for subscribing to our podcast. Um, we actually do 11 of these episodes per week um, as a podcast, and those episodes are instantly available to anyone who is a subscriber. So you'll find one link for iPhone, iPad users, and another one for Android users. Click the link that's appropriate for you, and you'll be able to be a subscriber too. And for our existing listeners, um, if you're listening to us live or even watching us live in the group right now, um, or even if you're listening afterward, like a podcast normally is, that's what a podcast is, right? You know, whichever way it is, <laughs> share the fact that you're listening. Share the fact that you're uh, listening to LOAToday.net and getting your daily dose of happy because we want to keep sharing that fact with as many people as possible. Our, our mission here is to reach millions and millions of people and help millions of people get that daily dose of happy that we all need in order to feel better and have uh, a better experience in attracting what it is we want to attract into our lives. So there's our promo messages for the day. And now I'm going to turn it over to the master guru of feelings to tell us more about the topic, Tom Wells. Tom, tell us what's going on with overriding difficult feelings to get what we want. Uh, yeah, I think I've been noticing that I had a, pa- a past pattern habit of not noticing all the time what I am feeling, for one thing. And then if it's a difficult feeling, um, my law of attraction way for the last five years has been to just pretty much as quickly as I can say, oh, well, how can I move beyond this? You know, if it doesn't feel good, why would I want to stay in that? If I can tell a better feeling story, if I can do a focus wheel, if I can do some process, um, I get out my appreciation journal until I start feeling better then I can, you know, move beyond that bad feeling. And I'm in my, in all these years I've been doing that, it's been pretty good. And yet I sort of ran up against kind of like um, blocks in a certain area where I feel like, well, why do some of these negative feelings just keep coming back again and again and again? Um, you know, wake up in the morning with a sometimes kind of like a fear inside my gut and, or, um, whatever it would be, and I started realizing that <clears throat> there's this thing called your internal guidance system that is your feelings. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so when you get a feeling, you're really being guided to your alignment with your higher self. You're being guided back towards feeling good and getting back in alignment. But if you don't feel the feeling, are you really listening to your guidance system? So if you right away go to a technique to say, okay, I'm just going to tell myself everything is awesome and I'm having an awesome day and you know what, gosh darn it, I feel good and I'm going to just keep feeling better and better. And, you know, I would do this in my car, not exactly like that. I would usually just name the feelings I wanted to have instead of the not so good feeling. And I believe that if I name those better feelings, and, and I noticed many times I would start feeling better. I would start, you know, feeling like, okay, 
I feel a lot better, and that's good. I don't, I don't feel so bad. Anyway, I'm starting to realize that I got to listen a little more to what these feelings are. That they're telling mm-hmm. me something. They're telling me something, and otherwise, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm bypassing them. I, I'm finding a way to create a fabricated story out of my mind. But does my body believe it? That's what it came down to. Does my heart mm-hmm. believe it? Because you know, you have this. They say your body never lies. You know, there's a lot of that out there these days in psychology and other realms, you know, saying your body is where these things are really taking place. You know, the heart has 100,000 more nerve endings than the brain. And so it's speaking to us much more um, clearly. And the mind is the mind does all kinds of wonderful things, but I don't think it's really the vehicle of change to get the changes we really want. I think we really have to listen to our heart and our body. And if if my if something just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back and I keep trying to override it with my mind with just more positive affirmations, it that's not really the way to get permanent change. I think permanent change comes from really listening to the feeling and then being able to sit with it until I I really allow it to have a voice. So <clears throat> That's what I've been doing. I've been doing that a whole lot more. And it's a little bit more of a challenging place to be because I have to be a lot more honest about what's what's really going on inside me on the level of feeling and not just always go up into my head and think of a way to override a, something that doesn't feel good, even a sensation in my body. Yeah. So anyway, that, I've said a lot now. i got to let you guys talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I can... You know, I could run the whole show. <laughs> you probably could, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. In fact, uh, um, I was kind of taking a, a cue from you and, and also from Cindy and Wendy, because all you guys have talked about these things, um, that the cue of, of trying to tap directly into that. Yesterday, when I took my my nature walk, which I hadn't done in days, and I was really feeling a need to get out there. But I got out there, and the weather was really nice, and I was enjoying it. But I also decided, okay, I'm going to see if I can just tap into stuff. Um, and I've been noticing, well, I've noticed for many years that when there's something negative floating around inside of me, it usually shows up as a pain somewhere, um, mm. often in my gut. And right. so I just started kind of doing the technique you've talked about, just asking my gut, you know, so what's going on here? And, and just waiting to see what would what would percolate to the top and found all kinds of, of very uncomfortable, very unpleasant feelings coming into play. It took probably about, I don't know. 20, 30 minutes for them to hold, for the whole thing just kind of bubble up and play out and feel them and so forth. Mm-hmm. And and the, I was really glad I was out on the nature walk because that gave me something to kind of, you know, feel better about, well, I'm experiencing all this negative yeah. stuff percolating up. Um, but by halfway through, it was feeling better. And um, that I, I have a walk where I, I walk out a distance and then I walk back. So halfway is where I do my turnaround. And after the turnaround... It was both, it, well, it's both kinds of turnarounds. It's a physical turnaround and it was an emotional turnaround too. You know, and after that turnaround, <laughs> not only did I feel better, but the pain went away, which is the signal mm-hmm. to me that, oh, okay, good. You know, the, the, the pain in my gut wasn't there anymore. And now mm-hmm. I was feeling better and, and I had released mm-hmm. uh, whatever the stuff was. And, and the interesting thing to me was I had always been under the impression that you're supposed to ask, you know, what is this all about? What, what's this feeling and so forth? What, what, what label would I give to this feeling? And I found that I actually would have gotten my own way if I had done that. I did try at first. I did try asking, well, what am I feeling? Am I feeling sadness? Am I feeling anger? What am I feeling? And that kind of just sent me off, you know, spinning off in a direction that didn't help at all. So I just kind of said, well, what what, what am I feeling? Just let me feel it without putting a label on it. And th- this stuff mm-hmm. just started to come up. And and that's when I had the, 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 the biggest relief was just I didn't try to label it. Just what, it's there. Come on up, whatever you are, and get out of me because I don't want you there anymore. Mm-hmm. So that was my experience yeah, yesterday yeah. with that. I mean, Alex, is that is that that sounds similar to what perhaps you've experienced from the way you're saying, yeah, 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 yeah. I am feeling this topic so hard because um, I struggle with anxiety, like, really badly. Like I have agoraphobia for those who don't know what agoraphobia is. It's the fear of uh, public spaces and in being out in public. So I've been struggling with that for like 11 years. So whenever I have like a panic attack or something like that going on, I'm always surprised by it. I'm always like, 
okay, what's going on? Why can't I breathe? Why is my heart racing? And then I'm like, oh, okay, it's a panic attack. But then I'm like, well, why is it happening? And then I'm like, I don't know why it's happening. I still, you know, and I've been in therapy for years and I still can't figure out why they happen. So I don't, I don't know. But it, uh, yeah, I'm definitely feeling this topic. <laughs> isn't it interesting too? You, you described within two sentences the kind of thing that I found often, which is on the one hand, you've experienced this for 11 years. And on the other hand, when it comes, you say, what is this? I don't recognize this. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven yeah. years of it, and we still don't recognize it. I, I that boggles yeah, it, my it mind. But we surprise every time. I know. <laughs> How could that be? We've been going going through the same cycle for eleven years, and yet it's still a surprise every time it happens. Wow! And yet that's exactly what happens. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. And the thing that's so fascinating to me is, you know, coming from the background of being a law of attraction coach and studying all those things that Abraham teaches. And then seeing how these are my feelings. These are the things that they that they say are so important to listen to. They're your guidance system. And so if these mm-hmm. things are coming up, it's telling you something mm. that's super important for your alignment. And if it doesn't feel good, tough luck. You know, that's the way I look at it. You know, <laughs> tough that, luck. Those feelings, <laughs> well, really, I mean, those feelings are there because of something got locked into us. You know, so there's some kind of pattern in there that's get, that's running on us, but it isn't a bad thing. It's the that's literally the guidance system that's t- that if we're able to listen to it, like you did on your walk, and I think it's so cool what you did because that's what I do with clients now when I'm doing emotional processing because now I'm you know getting this added credential as an emotional clearing facilitator, mm-hmm. and and so I take people through an hour long guided meditation where they get in touch with that stuff. And one of the things we do in the guided meditation is help them continually go up into their third eye and become the witness, become the witness of what's happening. You know, like you're having a panic attack and you sit down in the mall and you witness it, you know, because you, you don't let yourself become so caught up in it that you just spend your time freaking out. You, you could sit down on a bench and go, Okay, I'm having a panic attack. Sounds like what you did, I guess. But, mm-hmm. but you know, to the degree that we can watch the feeling happen and even start calling, just notice it as energy, like Walt did. You know, like mm-hmm. like being on that walk and going, wait a minute, do I have to label this? Because sometimes we throw a label on things and it then we attach to that. You know, I'm a bad person. You know, or why am I so screwed up? Or something like that. You know, at least I've been doing that. I I noticed, you know, I would get in this thing of thinking about leaving leaving my girlfriend and then thinking about how I'm just not a good guy. You know, I'm – and then f- f- feeling blame and shame. But after a while, I realized these are just feelings. They don't – they're not necessarily blame and shame. I mean, if that's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. And I can say, well, yeah, I, I grew up a Catholic. No wonder I have blame and shame and <laughs> guilt, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys were either of you guys catholic no no, no. no. presbyterian <laughs> but uh, but just as bad well, you missed you missed, you missed a good thing well, it's not well, too late. You well, Presbyterian, Presbyterian is catholic with very cold weather i mean cuz cuz presbyterian <laughs> comes from scotland <laughs> <laughs> okay catholic with very cold weather uh, <laughs> yeah, but anyway you know here's the thing that i love about emotional work is that I think it's how these things finally really leave us for good mm-hmm. is that when we spend some time with them and we're able to sit with it and, and let ourselves feel what it is and let it change, take its course, and it actually then begins the process of dissipation. It might take 100 years, but it will dissipate. <laughs> you know, it's like I hope it doesn't take that long. <laughs> when you're in the middle of that negative Me emotion, neither, you don't want that to go on for a hundred years. But you got, you got forever. You're an infinite being. You got, you got forever. So. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I want to have, you know, spend the next hundred years on it. I want, I want it to be gone a lot quicker than that. <laughs> oh, that's true. I agree. I agree. I, I, was, I was being a little bit facetious. Oh, okay, good. I was, I was getting worried uh, for a second there. <laughs> I don't really want to spend a hundred years in my, uh, my agony. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I'm, yes. definitely, I'm definitely not an expert on it. I'm just learning. But but I do believe this is how I will finally move beyond some of these things. And I've had friends already tell me they think that they can see the layers peeling off me of my own self 
sabotage, you know. Oh, that's the that cool. I make, the, the way that I make my life hard, harder than it needs to be because I stay stuck in, I guess it's when we believe somehow that the emotion has got us in a bad place and we're stuck there you instead of breathing. Way. Yeah, I mean, we, we can really move through these things. Mm-hmm. You know, what's been your experience, Alex? Are you do you feel like you've dissipated and and moved beyond some of the things as you have done your emotional work? Um, well, I've definitely done the emotional work on the depression, so that's dissipated. So nice. I'm I'm happy about that. But the yeah. anxiety and the agoraphobia, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's rough. It's it's hard work. Well, Tom just mentioned something that uh, his friends had noticed changes in him, which kind of implied that he hadn't necessarily noticed it himself, but his friends had. I'm wondering if the same thing happened mm-hmm. with you, because I've noticed that people see changes in us before we see it in ourselves. So I'm wondering, are are you seeing from your friends indications that maybe it's going away even though you don't see it? Yes. Yeah, I would say so, because, mm-hmm. um, you know, I make, I'm making efforts to, uh, to see people and go to important events and stuff like that. So People are like, oh, my God, Like you wouldn't even leave the house before. So I'm, I'm very excited for what's going on right now. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm that, so you just gave an happy. example. <laughs> right there, you just gave a great yeah. example. You, you said on the one hand yeah. you didn't really notice in yourself, and yet you just pointed out you leave the house more often. And you, you know that objectively to be true. Well, that to me is one yeah. of those ways that we block ourselves. We know it. We know that yeah. this thing happened, but we just don't allow ourselves to know it. Well, you just allowed yourself to know it, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's what I said. Hey, that you know, might be a really no, go ahead. That, that might be really a, a key part of it is when we um, we feel like we're locked into negative feelings or negative places, and we're unwilling to accept the fact that we are changing, and mm. that every moment is brand new. And if if we're doing this is what I've had people who have done this work like for 30 or 40 years are telling me. They said, mm-hmm. you're always processing. You're always moving. You know, you're, you're, mm-hmm. everything's malleable, and it, you're never in a static place. And so a lot of it is our – that is where maybe belief comes in that I am changing, and I can actually feel it on really subtle levels. Like, like I can get in the car, and let's say I just had a session where I worked on my emotions, and – and I start driving down the road, and I I feel different. It's very subtle, but it's a feeling mm-hmm. of that I the feeling that I'm looking for, and that I'm really reason I'm doing a lot of this emotional work. I call it feeling um, standing stronger in my body, standing more firm on my own two legs about who I am. You know, like if you, Alex, like if you walk in the mall, you know, or in a public place, and you, but you you more and more feel like you know what I am. I am who I am, and and gosh darn it, I'm <laughs> I'm incredible, you know. Uh, um, <laughs> gosh darn it, um, no. But just that just that feeling that you know that we we are who we are, and no one can take anything away from us, and it's only us who are really our own critic, you know. Ultimately, mm-hmm. yeah. And mm-hmm. so if if we're able to say, hey, I'm doing the work, and but of course, if we don't feel better, that's that's not you know that's different you know. And then we get, identify with not feeling good, and then we get all caught up in that. That's yeah. But that but that's a habit. That's like a something we can recognize that we do that. Mm-hmm. And um, now there are times where people com- it's kind of complex. There are times when people get kind of wrapped up in how other people are treating them, and. The, the net result often is that, well, this other person or these other people are treating me badly, so therefore I feel badly about it, which is kind of a, I don't know, it, 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 it's kind of like dismissing your own power when you do that because you're, you're, yeah. you have to kind of basically say to yourself, I don't have any control over how I feel about you know what somebody else is saying about me in order to get to that place in the first place. Um, but nevertheless, that's what people do. And, and when we do that, we basically are setting ourselves up for more of the same feelings, more of the same stuff, regardless of whether those critics are around or not. So I think that goes to what you said, Tom. I think we really are the, the worst critic. We are certainly the worst critic, and we're probably the critic 
because we're taking on board what other people are saying, even when they're not there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, and that's just when, it, when the better feeling stories does come into play, especially because, like, I got every year for the last 15 years, I've been invited to this really great Halloween party um, with a whole bunch of friends I've known for 30 or 40 years. And and so I really got into about, I don't know, about eight years ago, I just got into wearing incredible costumes, you know, where I would paint my whole face and I would I would really show up really in really blown out costume and so I was starting to have a lot of fun with it but it was getting old and I was starting to the last couple of years going now nah, do I really want to go and um, have to come up with another outfit and <laughs> you know so it wasn't as much fun well this year they didn't invite me <laughs> and <Wow>. um, <laughs> yeah and um, and yet it's because I'm no longer sort of philosophically aligned with that group they're they're all involved mm. with a teacher a certain teacher from India and I don't, I no longer kind of involved with that teacher, but they all mm -hmm. are. And I think they finally, I don't know if they talked amongst themselves or whatever and said, you know, he's just not even into what we're into. And he always wears a better costume than we do. So why invite him? <laughs> <'Cause> he's, he, <laughs> <you know. laughs> he's always going to win, you know. He's always have a contest and, and so they said, let's just get him out of here. Um, but, but seriously, I, I was then faced with, all this emotion of rejection, you know, of these are, have been my friends forever. And I mm -hmm. love, I love those people in a lot of ways, although I don't hang with them that much anymore because we don't have as much to talk about as we used to, because I'm off on different directions with my life. And, but it was a great example to me of where are you really at with your life, Tom? And what do you really want? Because these aren't the friends you really want anymore, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, you're not that happy there when you go. You you know, it's kind of like not your scene. And it, it just made me accept the fact that maybe it's okay for me to change. You know, that maybe I don't mm -hmm. have to play the same game just because there's security there. You know, I mean, I do miss the friendships, and I decided I am still going to reach out to those people you know, one-on-one -on -one and go to dinner and stuff like that because I do love a lot of them. But then I can handpick the ones I want to be with. There you go. So it, it, it just showed me that if I do this emotional work and I'm really honest with myself, I might have to just in certain areas grow up, you know, and, and be more mature about my own evolution as an infinite being, you know, because that's what it all comes down to me is that I'm an infinite being and I'm playing – in a big arena and I don't have to limit myself to always looking for security and always looking yeah. for safety. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's other ways to find safety and security by just being more who I really am in my own empowerment. Mm. So there's that for what it's worth. No, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> did did no, you have anything you wanted to, to add? Because if not, Alex, I, I can go on to what I was going to say, but I wanted to give you a chance. No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. Well, what I I'm had. I'm sorry if I cut you off. I didn't know I did. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, what what I had uh, noticed this morning, I think perhaps ties into this a little bit. And let let me tell you a little bit of a story as a lead up to kind of give you the background of it. Um, mm -hmm. About oh, how far back was it? Maybe two months ago, Linda Armstrong, who does the Friday afternoon podcast with me, gave me a free session. And what she does is energy work. She She's all about reading energy and sending energy and just doing everything to allow um, source energy to just do its stuff that, uh, you know, the good stuff that we want to have happen. And she's into, uh, you know, like uh, uh, cards, tarot cards and so forth. She, she's into a lot of stuff that's all energetically based. Well, she did this energy session with me. And there were a few things that were really interesting about it. One thing that was interesting was that when she connected to me, she, she goes through this routine where she asks for permission to connect, and then you give permission, okay, you can connect. And when she did, like within three or four seconds after I said yes, I actually physically felt this this flow of energy coming at me, which shocked the hell out of me. I thought, I thought this was more metaphorical than anything, but no, this was like real energy coming at me. And, and I, I had never experienced that before in any kind of a reading, so that alone was interesting. And then uh, she does. Uh, she uses a form of muscle testing to uh, uh, get kind of delve into what's going on with you. And at one point during the muscle testing, 
she asked a question. I don't remember the exact question, but the gist of it was this. Do you have any fear that you will be killed if, um, if you attract money into your life? And my conscious mind was saying, well, that's a dumb question <laughs> because I know that's not wow. true. <laughs> and the muscle testing said yes. I said, what? Really? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? And, and even, you know, up until like a week ago, I still was completely flummoxed about that. Like, I don't even know where that came from. Was it like a flaw in the test or something? Mm-hmm. Until uh, it was, um, let's see, today is the second, so it was yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday morning. I awoke and realized I'd had a dream that I have been dreaming for many, many years now on a fairly regular mm-hmm. basis. And the dream usually comes up. The reason I, I mentioned first, you know, November 1st being yesterday, first of the month is when I do most bookkeeping related stuff. And it's when I notice most often what's going on financially with me and Louise and not always good. <laughs> and so I've noticed over time as I, as I thought about it, um, after having this dream that this dream occurred whenever I was directly interacting with our financial situation. And the dream was that someone was trying to chase me and kill me. And I said, wait a minute. That's what Linda told me. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> So I woke up this morning and I got out my Ask and It Is Given book by Abraham Hicks because they've got the 22 processes in the back and one of them is evaluating dreams. So I wanted to read what is said about evaluating dreams. And and what it said is, is in essence, I'm going to kind of translate this because it's actually a fairly long chapter, but uh, in essence, it comes down to this. What you've been focusing on specifically in the largest way is what tends to produce a similar kind of, of vibrational manifestation in your dream. Not necessarily the exact same subject matter, but the same kind of thing. And, and that just kind of reinforced. I'm focusing on a financial situation that I don't like, and then I go have a dream where somebody's trying to kill me. Yeah. So there is a connection going on there. And so I woke up right. this morning and I'm thinking about that because that had actually happened two nights ago. But I woke up this morning thinking about that same thing and realizing, first of all, I had not had that dream last night which came after the, the nature walk where I, I flushed out all those negative emotions that were sticking inside me. So I actually had a good night's sleep last night. So all that was starting to connect together. And then while I'm lying there, I, I often like to do uh, what many people do in meditation just as I'm coming awake. I, I'll lay in bed for a bit and just kind of focus on you know what it is I want to attract most in my life or feeling good about stuff. And in the process of doing that, a, a familiar pattern occurred. And that pattern is where I'm trying to recreate the feeling of what it is that I want. The, the Neville Goddard idea um, of of uh, uh, imagining the the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And I'm I'm just lying there and I'm trying to create this one particular feeling and I can't do it. I can't quite create the feeling. I can't really quite create the the event. You now, Cindy Chavez and I have talked about how you try to create like a little vignette event, like a little 10 second play, so to speak, and what would happen immediately after the thing that you're trying to attract happens. Um, and I, I couldn't even get that going. And so I'm, I'm lying there saying, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do here. And finally, I, I just got the idea, well, okay, inner being, my inner being, I'm going to talk with you for a minute and say, inner being, just give me a feeling. Feel it for me. I don't know what to feel. I can't seem to get there. So feel something for me. And I felt this glow coming up inside of me, this, this very warm feeling coming up inside of me. So I think what I've done is I, I've discovered for myself how to stop trying to effort the feeling into being and instead just let it come out. And I figure that's got to be good, not only for letting go of difficult feelings, but for also recognizing and creating good feelings. Because among other things, it means I don't actually have to do it. I just kind of let it come. Yeah. At least that's my current theory, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of that, Tom? Well, that makes sense. Whoops. We lost Tom's voice. Somebody muted me. I, it wasn't me. Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear yes. you now. Okay. Well, I love what you're saying because that's what the work I'm doing now. And in the sessions that I do, you take a person into this alpha state of meditation where, you know, you – you get basically get there through your breath and your breath is your breath is literally um, almost like a frequency generator. It, it generates the frequency of your life force. And, 
and if you if you if you use your breath as a way to go into a more meditative state, then you're accessing things on a much more feeling level. And so there's different things that you do to get into that state. But when I'm in that state and there's somebody subtly guiding me, like probably like Linda did with you, I watch, I literally watch my body do things if I really surrender. You know, like in this session the other day, my my, my head was being pulled down to the left and I got my eyes closed and everything. And But I don't know why my head's being pulled down to the left. And mm. then maybe this certain pain comes up in my shoulder that wasn't there before and then that pain leads to this arm wanting to do this and <laughs> and the other day i went through a whole session like that that literally showed me things about about myself that were very powerful and in the end my my left arm wanted to do something and i didn't know what it was and it, the session had been going on for like 45 minutes and and my arm was going like like this and finally it it went into this position you know which is a meditative mudra you know yeah. when, when you meditate and yeah. and i was so amazed to i didn't know what my hand wanted to do and and when it finally did that this feeling came all the way up my arm and through my whole body of meditation you know i've been meditating for many years and i and i could recognize oh you know this is this is another feeling that i have in my body of great peace and great great ease and great tranquility but it came naturally during the session mm -hmm. in other words these other bad feelings i was having or you not bad but feelings that were more difficult to deal with you know like cuz one of the big feelings when she said do you have any words that go with that feeling this is when i was literally collapsed bent over from the waist with my head almost on the ground you know sitting in this chair and she said, what, is, what words are associated with that? And I said, I can't get to where I want to get to. And that's been one of the biggest themes in my life for a long time is that I can't get to the place I want with my career, can't get to the place I want with friendships, can't get to the place I want with relationships, can't get to the place where I want with money. You know? And I was thinking, oh, and, and I realized that was a big thing that happened at my birth is that my mother held me in in the birth canal because I was in a cab. She was in a cab trying to get to the hospital. She didn't want me to be born in the cab. And she t would tell that story all the time to the family. Oh, Tom, he just wanted to be born in that cab, and I wouldn't let him. I held him in. And then you read psychologists talk about that as one of the classic birth traumas. You know, when the mother yeah. holds the baby in, then the baby feels like it's going to die because it's – it's being pushed from the back to come out and held by the mother's really powerful thigh muscles or whatever those muscles are to not be born. And so the baby has to just totally surrender to the mother's power. And and then, you know, I've lived with that my whole life, kind of like this thing that I can't really step out of my own stage because I feel like my I had this really powerful thing tell me you're going to die if you step out on that stage and be who you really are. You know, you're going to... Yes. You know, you, it was just a very strong thing. But to watch in this session how I went through that, and then I, I found myself throwing my arms back and feeling, well, the only thing I can do is just give up. You know, that's all I can do is give up. But once I completely gave up and spent some time feeling that feeling, that's when this feeling of meditation came. And so I ended the session feeling this incredible peace, sort of like Walt did on his walk, because – I went through all these different feelings, and then I arrived at peace. And it it's just shows me that the body knows how to take us through this stuff mm. if we listen to our feelings. And that's why I wanted to do a, um, a podcast on this, because I really believe it's a powerful way to to get through feelings and arrive at a true peace where you're standing very solidly in who you are, rather than using a whole bunch of techniques to kind of try to prop up your idea of you being a peaceful person, you being a happy person, you being a successful person, you know, find it through going through feelings. Let your guidance system show you, you know, because it's a natural inborn guidance system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we spend, oh, yeah, that's my, we spend a lot of time on that kind of thing, don't we? Faking it till you make it, trying to push ourselves, trying to get ourselves into a feeling place instead of allowing feelings. Because if you're not, if you're just allowing feelings, 
we, we want control. That feels like we're out of control at first, right? Because it's whatever comes up. It's like, oh, geez, I'm not sure yeah. I want to have whatever comes up. That's not fun. So and maybe we're yeah. afraid that feeling's going to last forever. Yeah. You know, that I'll, yeah. I'll never get beyond this. Especially, I guess, like Alex, <laughs> you, you've had a lot of experience of feeling that that, uh, is it what you call agoraphobia? That, yes. That that's, have you had a lot of feeling that it's just not going to go away? Yeah, pretty I, and, much. I'm like, and I've settled kind of into pr- this is the rest of my life. Mm. So do you still feel that way? Mm, yes and no. I'm always, it's always going to be in the back of my mind. Okay. Today I can't, I can't go out today, but mm-hmm. you know, there are days where I can, you know, make it to doctor's appointments and stuff like that. But there are days where I'm like, I got to cancel this doctor's appointment. I can't do it today. But have you gotten better over time? Yeah, it's it's been a long haul, but yeah, I've gotten better. This is what I hear from anybody who had really intense PTSD, you know, like a really mm-hmm. intense trauma somewhere in their yeah. life or maybe their birth or something. Then they they get better over time, and the gaps in between their incidences of them feeling traumatized are, are wider and wider. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have this um, coach I work with who's – who was in this really intense auto accident where she lost both of her parents and her husband in the auto accident. Oh, and, wow. and she had to sort of tend to them as they died, you know, on the highway or wherever it was. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then the, and then afterwards when she would be asked about her accident in the first couple of years or she would say, yeah, it was bad, but you know what? I mean, it happened, you know, and I'm, I'm over yeah. it. And, and, you know, and, and when she she finally had a huge breakdown and she realized she wasn't over it at all. She had just never – she was in total denial. Mm. Yeah. And so never then she spent – yeah, then she spent 10 years in really intense psychoanalysis to process it. Mm-hmm. You know, not just yeah. psychotherapy, psychoanalysis where you spend hours on the couch, you know, with, with a psychiatrist. And mm-hmm. she finally, with this Jungian – Jungian analysis, she she really made progress, but she said now she knows she's going to have it the rest of her life, but that, that the periods in between get bigger and bigger of where mm-hmm. she can be okay, you know, and then she'll have an incident where she'll feel really that depth, that level of terror, that level yep. of horror will come up, and then she'll get through it, she'll recognize it coming, she'll be able to witness it, and not be so immersed in it. And then she's healthier and healthier. But what the gift she's gotten out of it is she's she went from being a dentist to being this incredible therapist. And she mm. because that and see that's what a shaman is. A shaman is a person who's had a really intense wound, but they've gone through their wounds, and now they can help other people because they've dealt with their wound. And 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 that's I think what we're all given the opportunity to do is to own our stuff, own the yeah. stuff we've been traumatized by. And keep working on it, and we get more and more able to then help others, and help ourselves more. Mm-hmm. But we don't we don't run constantly from the pain that's inside of us, you know, from the from the feelings that feel so difficult. We don't always look for a way to get away from it. Well, it certainly makes sense because anyway. you really can't give love or help or anything else to somebody else until you've got it to give. That's one of the Abraham sure. principles that I really love. Like, you got to have it in order to give it. And, and so often we try to give without having it, you know, and which is kind of it's doing it backwards. It doesn't work that way, but we try to do it anyway. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that that's what a, a shaman or a guru or whatever it would be. Somebody who has been or a, through. Good, a, a good coach, a good coach. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. Yeah. Good talk. Good talk show host. <laughs> Oh, come on. Now you're going to expose all my, my scars to the world. <laughs> well, I'll, I'm, I'm on the talk show, too. I'm a co-host. So oh, that's true. Okay. My scars. So you're exposed all of our scars to the world. Well, well do that's that anyway. what drove me to do this work was that I didn't feel as authentic as I knew I really could be. Mm-hmm. I felt like, wait a minute, you know, something in me feels, and even when I'd be working with clients, sometimes I feel I couldn't take them far enough. And I, mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I can only take them as far as the work that I've done, you know. Mm. So, but I thought that I could do a lot of it with my head. Mm-hmm. And now I realize now. the only real work happens with the heart. And that's right. why Ab- Abraham's always saying, words don't teach, only direct experience teaches. Mm-hmm. But you have to live these things, and they got to be real. 
through? So when you've been going through your uh, uh, your therapy, Alex, to uh, deal with the agoraphobia, is, is what Tom's describing here, does that match up what you experience while you're doing the therapy? Not at all. Really? Oh. <laughs> because my, yeah, so my, my therapist, um, I don't think they, they study law of attraction or anything spiritual. You know what I mean? They, they study what they study in school. They study, they study therapy. Mm-hmm. So. Rose. Whoops. Okay. Sorry. My Wi-Fi went out for a second. Ah. Um, <laughs> She's back. So right? they, <laughs> yay. So they study CBT and, you know, um, exposure therapy and, and things of that nature, which, you know, can work, but I don't feel like it worked for me. And I, I, you can't, I'm such a difficult case. I've got so many issues that you can't put me in a box and you can't just solve one issue at a time. It's, it's all congruent with each other. So that's the issue I'm having now. When when you, which is why I've been in, which is why you've been in therapy all these years, right? (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Well, when you're in therapy, you're supposed to also work outside of therapy. So it makes me wonder, do you, do you take other approaches outside of therapy to kind of, uh, work together with what you're doing when you're with your therapist. Yes, I do. Because mm-hmm. I think yeah, that's probably going to make a difference. Yeah, by taking time to uh, go go to events that are important. Like I went to my brother's wedding. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to my uh, my brother from another mother, his his baby shower. I'm going there. So um, baby steps, you know, I'm doing, yeah. doing things. That's good. Why is it, why is it different for you to be so calm on this podcast where millions of people are watching you as opposed to being out in the mall or something or at a wedding. Because I'm home and secure in my safe space. Yeah. And you don't see those people. No. Even if I see them, like like I said, I was a stand-up comedian for for years, so that yeah. that didn't bother me. I, know, I yeah. don't get nervous. I get anxious. So anxiety is like a whole separate entity to me. And it, and it just, it takes over my body, but it doesn't, it's not nervousness. So I don't, I don't get stage fright. I don't get, you know, I don't get intimidated by things like this. So what, but wait a minute. Why didn't a stand-up comedian intimidate you? Cause that's with live audiences, right? Yeah. Um, that was before the agoraphobia. Oh, that's recent. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like that sequence. <laughs> so did you have? About it. <laughs> did you have some major trauma in your past? Then, obviously, I don't. I haven't uh, pinpointed it yet, but I'm oh, really? sure. I'm sure there's there's something. Mm. Huh. Like a mother and a father, things like that. Or no mother. Well, I got no both father. of those. Oh, I got okay. both of those. This, this is true. You wouldn't that's be here without where, that. That's usually where a lot of it comes from. <laughs> yeah, I def I do have daddy issues. I definitely do. Uh, me and my father don't speak. Mm. Um, he's just not. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's he's not good for my for my mental health. Mm. So I I choose to keep him out of my life just for my personal well being. Yeah, and that, that must go sense. back a ways. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. But it's interesting, though, that the agoraphobia is a, relatively speaking, a recent occurrence. Yeah, Cause, yeah, cause it is. Often those kinds of things go on for years and years and years, and, and that's not the case with you. So it sounds to me like it's no, going to be it, something that when you when you nail it down, you're going to be, relatively speaking, easier to nail down because it's more recent. I hope so. I would Fingers think. crossed. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, like what they say, what Abraham said, is that the, ble- the best place to work on anything is always in the present rather than, mm-hmm. say, digging up a past thing, mm. because mm-hmm. the present is, even though it doesn't maybe feel as the same as the past thing, it actually is being presented to us by life, by, you know, um, source, because it's a better way to actually work on it is what's happening in this moment and this moment and this moment. You know, it's always mm-hmm. whatever is showing up is that's our reality. That mm-hmm. really is where we're at. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and that's and that's where all the emotions can be dealt with in the best way possible. And mm-hmm. so always the conditions that we're see, we're the thing I love is that we really are the creators of the whole thing. And so, you know, I'm actually manifesting you two guys because you're the best 
thing for me to manifest right now in my life. You know, there, I couldn't uh-huh. do it. I couldn't do it better. You know, and yeah. and you and you couldn't do it better. This is actually yeah. exactly what we need right now for every single thing. And if we can sort of settle into that, it's the same as any emotion. Like I was woken up um, last night to pee at one point, which happens almost every night. And usually I go back and I go back to sleep. But instead I went back and I started feeling this pain in my side that I get a lot in my right side. And I, you know, it's a, it's my biggest muscle. One of the biggest muscles in the body is called the psoas, P-S-O-A-S muscle. And there's one on each side, you know, and they're the muscles that, that we bend with, you know, um, and mm-hmm. we do a lot of lifting with all kinds of things. We walk with them so as muscle. It enables us to lift our legs and all kinds of things. And it, it in me, has been a big problem for a while. And, and I had a psychic tell me, he said, that's where you are concentrating most of your emotional pain. You know, your, un, your unfinished emotional business is all hanging out there. And, and then it gets incredibly painful, and it affects me walking and all kinds of things. Well, last night... It was getting really painful, and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I started to just be with it, and I just let my consciousness just really feel into it. And and I kept asking it, "What do you need? What do you want? Tell me, you know, like show me." Because I I didn't want it to get. It's it's. I've had to go to the emergency room before with it, you know, and yeah. because it just got so bad. And so it was amazing because I just kept feeling it and feeling it and talking to it, and. I, it, it evolved and it, it dissipated and I went back to sleep. It completely went away. It was so cool because I just asked it. I asked it to go away. I asked it to just let me know what it needed and then to go away. And, it, and it, eventually it did exactly that. And it felt so cool that I could just be with it and let it evolve. And I've done that a number of times with it over the years. I mean, I've, I've, that's probably like the 10th time I've done that when it's just getting out of control. And and the one day that I had to go to the emergency room was, no matter what I said, it it just got worse and worse and worse. Mm-hmm. And um, but I know that I'm the one that's triggered. The broadcast of Facebook Live has stopped. Oh dear, I'm not sure what happened there. Oh. But mm. oh, okay, well, <laughs> we'll 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 let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I have no idea why they have. I didn't push any buttons, so I'm kind of sitting here befuddled. Well, they gave you 54 minutes of uh, live time. Yeah, so I don't know what that was about. But <laughs> maybe that's okay. it's got a limit on. Uh, maybe no, because no, Facebook we've, doesn't have a uh, limit. No, we've got. I think the limit on Facebook is four hours, so I don't think we have a problem there. Um, oh, yeah, I, I think we just lost a signal or something, but that's okay. So we'll just finish the last five minutes. That's all right. Go ahead with what you're, what you were saying, if if you can remember well, before you were so rudely interrupted. Well, that's, no, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much what I was just saying is that is that I'm learning that the same thing that we said all through this podcast is that by being with feelings and being easy on herself about about sitting with them a little bit longer, we can learn a lot and we can mm-hmm. talk to them and we can we we can let them teach us because they are. They are um, very much who we are, uh, almost more than our mental opinion of it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's just like there. We did a whole podcast, Walt and I, a number of weeks ago that was called, I forget the name of it, but it was about, you know, let's say that you're you're going through agoraphobia, and then you tell yourself all this story about how messed up you are because you have agoraphobia or something, or you know, how bad you, how especially bad you feel today. Um, and, you know, that added commentary doesn't make it any better. Mm. It just mm-hmm. adds to it. Whether, whereas if you could just sit with the fact of going into your body and saying, where do I feel this, you know, and how does it feel? You mm-hmm. could watch it, you could watch it, tr- you know, move and let it teach you something, you know, let it show you something rather than, what because what we do a lot is we we make up a story that makes things worse and then we lock in the story as if that was the truth and really there the body has a lot more wisdom than that let's yeah. put it put it that way and we could go into this place of being the witness of it where we realize that we're more in the the place of consciousness not so much thought but consciousness that's watching what's taking place and then the body can just do its thing and work its work these things out for us. Yeah. 
there's this thing called linking and, and, and it's linking is where it can go from, you know, like your right side to your left side. It can go from a pain in your neck to a pain in your foot. Literally what mm-hmm. happened to me the other day in one of my sessions, it ended up in my foot, you know, like all this intensity, you know, and my foot was cramping and everything. And I, it just doesn't make any sense, but it is the, it is the, that feeling, that emotion doing what it needs to do. And, um, it does give a new meaning to the it. words, the, 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 the phrase that Abraham uses is the art of allowing, and it gives new meaning to the idea mm-hmm. of the art of allowing, allowing not just, okay. Um, letting stuff in, not just you know, uh, letting whatever you're trying to attract in, but allowing your feelings to be whatever they are, and and just yeah. you know, come up the way that they are instead of trying to mold them into something. It's a, it's, it's a different way of looking at allowing, but it's really the same topic, really, because it's all about mm-hmm. allowing right. what's going on, and being in the position of the observer and the witness rather than the one who is completely um, the victim. Mm-hmm. You know, like t- taking taking responsibility for the fact that. Hey, sometime, somehow I I have created this in my life, or you know, it's I'm not the victim of it. Now, how can I observe it and trust the fact that Source has got this figured out? You know, Source, my my higher self, knows what to do, and it and if I let go of the oars and I quit trying so hard, I can flow with this thing, and I will end up where I want to end up. And as my coach was saying to me yesterday. Isn't this about the journey more than it is where you end up? You know, it's like, can you can you go easy with this and be on a journey with it rather than feeling that until I get to the place of feeling good, I can't be happy feeling uncomfortable? You know, maybe mm-hmm. you can be with that uncomfortable feeling and find out what it wants to teach you. You know, maybe there's a big learning in it for you, you know. And that's how you end up the shaman, you know, or whatever. You know, <laughs> not that you have to be a shaman, but... You end up wise. You end up wise, yeah. you know, instead mm-hmm. of confused about who you are. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. In fact, uh, I, I like the idea that I explored this morning, which was just reach, reach inside and let the, the higher self or my inner being, as I like to refer to it, let my inner being supply the feeling. You know, that way, that way I don't have to even think about what the feeling is. Just, okay, what's the feeling that comes up? And the thing that goes along with that that I like is, my inner being, Abraham teaches us, is always looking at us in the most positive light. So that means most of the time what's going to come up is going to be positive. I mean, if anything negative comes up, it's actually going to be just stuff I've stored that my inner being is kind of helping push out of the way and, and get out of my system. And then once it gets through, then what my inner being feels starts coming through. So in any given situation, no matter what it, I'm going through, I know at, by the end of it, I'm going to be feeling good because that's what my inner being is ultimately always transmitting me at every time mm-hmm. at every moment yeah which is that's that's uh, reassuring for me so yeah, this this is, is good it is reassuring isn't it it feels better when you know that like yeah. oh this is all going yeah. to work out <laughs> yeah well i've always felt like that everything just works out for me mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just how it is that's good but that's law of attraction <laughs> it is that is so this has been great uh good discussion guys tom before we go uh, since you are a life coach and sometimes uh people like to connect to the life coaches that we have on the program and, and maybe even talk about something privately. How does somebody reach out to you? Uh, they can go to my website, which is youarejoy.com, and that's the word, youarejoy.com, and there's a, a way that they can sign up there. In, it's in the menu for a free one-half-hour coaching session. Sometimes they go longer than that. Uh, the one the other day was an hour and a half with somebody. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, but, you know, just because that's what it happened and it was good. That's good. So they can sign up for a free coaching session. All right. And Alex, uh, have fun with uh, the family event this weekend, the baby shower. That sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you and I will connect back up uh, next Tuesday with Carlos. Yes. <laughs> sounds nice good. to meet you, Alex. Nice to meet you, too. Okay. And that, nice to meet all of our listeners, too. We, we thank you for listening, and we hope that you will join us next time as well here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>